Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Binet Math, and today we're learning about graph quadratic functions using transformations. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. In three previous videos, we talked about the vertical shift, the horizontal shift, and the stretch or compressing of our quadratic function. Recapping that, vertical shift is caused by our plus k, up or down from our original quadratic function. Our horizontal shift, h value goes left or right h units, depending on some rules there. And the stretch or compress happens with our a value, which is right in front of x squared, our coefficient there. And that makes it, you know, wider or skinnier depending on the value. A also has a little property. If it's negative, we'll flip it upside down. So um, our basic quadratic turns into a U shape to a frown if it's negative or back to a U if it's positive. So that's the one thing to keep in mind that A can do as well. So we can see that all summarized right here. F of X equals A times X minus H all squared plus K. A value again stretch or compresses and flips the uh, quadratic depending if it's positive or negative. Our H value here is our horizontal shift and our K value is our vertical shift right there. So let's go hop on to Maple Learn to see how each one of these variables together can shape, change, and adapt the original quadratic equation to really get any other quadratic function that you want to have and graph it there. So now we're going to go to Learn on maplesoft.com and we're talking about well graphing quadratic functions using all the transformations so let's go grab, uh, write the equation y equals a parentheses x minus h all squared and then plus k we can slide this over let's make it a little closer to our graph before we start using it and we're gonna hit the again light bulb button here now I'm gonna convert function to a variable a here first just so it knows that it's a variable and then I'm going to say parameterize a h and k right there now <clears throat> what we're going to do here again I'm going to uh, only zoom vertically here and I'm going to kind of move around change this zoomed window here now the window is dynamic uh, but you can obviously change this however you want all right for a pretty good place right here so I'm going to lock the screen and while we're at it, I'm actually going to graph our base function, where we're used to always seeing y equals x squared. Okay. Let's go set some parameters for our a value here. I'm going to set a to be anywhere. Uh, let's be continuous. Let's just go from negative 5 to positive 5. Set a range here for that. Okay. h value should be good. I think we're still from negative 10 to 10. I'm going to make that not continuous, but solid. Or by uh, integer values. And the same thing with k, we can do the same thing. k value change from, let's go negative 10 to positive 10. But I do not want it continuous, I want to go by integers. It just makes it easier to see. So if we want to go to our base function, our a value needs to be one. Our h value, our uh, little shift here we see horizontally, should be zero. And our vertical shift, again, should be zero. And so we have the function right on top of each other, right here, we can see that we, well, we have it right there, just lined up, and it looks exactly as y equals x squared. So let's say we wanna go change this, and let's say what happens when we have an a value of two. Again, what should happen? Think about it, see what happens. All right, a value becomes two, and we're getting a little skinnier, which we can get right on two. There we go, all right. If h is a negative one, what happens? I want you to think about it. What happens if h is a negative one? And again, notice how the equation is changing down here. h is a negative one. Oh, we have a plus one, right? Double negative makes a positive. And our graph now shifted it to the left one unit. Now, our k value, let's say if k is equal to three, what should happen? Well, we go up three units right there. And we can see this is a great tool when we talk about transformations here, especially quadratic functions, that you can easily set this up and explore what happens with different things. Now what happens with the same graph, let's say if a is a negative two, it should be exactly the same skinniness. This vertex should be the same exact point right here, but it's going to be flipped upside down. It should be a frown. So let's go to negative two. If we can get right on it, 
makes it a little difficult. Ah, uh, there we... If I can get right on it. Alright, it's close enough. 2.0, negative 2.02 is very close. It gets kind of finicky. I can decrease my range and I think I can even type it in manually, to be honest. Yeah, right there. So you can have that function if you don't use a slider, you can just type your values in manually and you can graph it here. Each value, let's say is five. Boom, got my graph. Slid right over uh, five units to the right from where we were. And let's go make our K value. All right, if we want to make it a negative three, this should drop down a total of six units from its current spot. Oh, whoops, that is not, it went equal negative three, it went too much. And let's go parameterize that. There we go. <laughs> and we, oh, we gotta change this negative three. There we go. We got double here, we can delete that here just quickly. Nice. Don't need that, all right. But anyway, these slider functions are very useful, especially when teaching this topic and seeing this transformation. So if you wanna check this out more and follow along, you can go to learn.maplesoft.com and you can explore how to do these quadratic transformations using their software. Did you learn something? If you did, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This helps us make more of these math lessons for you and for everyone else. So, as always, thanks for watching.